Amen. Not only brings you up, out, over, and through. Yes. Amen. He'll bring a way. All right. And you know, the way that God, remember what he, his words said, he's a light to our feet. Mm -hmm. yes. He's a light to our path. Yes. yes, Lord. And so God has a pathway to victory. Somebody said God has a pathway to victory. God has a pathway to victory. God is a strategic God. Yes. Amen. He has strategies. And some of the strategies that he has, amen, sometimes it's hidden in his grace. It's hidden in mercy. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes this strategy seems like you about to lose the battle. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because sometimes God will allow the enemy to think that he's won. Right. Just so he can bring them all the way out. Mm -hmm. Amen. To the open. But when God gets ready to do something, mm -hmm. it's just a matter of time mm -hmm. before he's going to show up. Somebody say he's going to show up. He's going to show up. Say it again. God's going to show up. God's going to show up. Say it one more time. God's going to show up. God's going to show up. Amen. And, and so uh, many times when David, and of course King David had a lot of the battles uh, in the time that God chose him. Even before he became king, mm -hmm. he had to learn how to fight a bear. Yeah. He had to learn how to fight a lion. Mm -hmm. So to prepare him to fight a giant. And sometimes in our life, we are, God is executing a strategic plan mm -hmm. to give us victory. Mm -hmm. Victory what? Over sin, over, over shame, sin. Mm -hmm. over whatever, sickness, disease, financial issues. And sometimes the strategy that God uses doesn't seem to make sense. Mm -hmm. Has God ever allowed you to go through something that just didn't make sense to you? Mm -hmm. And yeah. you said, Lord, I, I, I know you love me and mm -hmm. I, I know I'm saved, mm -hmm. but Lord, this just don't make no sense. Yeah. God has a purpose behind everything that he permits Amen. Amen. and allows in your life. It is permitted in grace. Yes. Amen. 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 God's going to bring you through it. Yes, so a very familiar psalm. I want to start with Psalms 91. Amen. First of all, the strategy says... He that dwelleth mm -hmm. in the secret place of the Most High God mm -hmm. shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. So there's a place in God right. that is secret. Mm -hmm. I remember one time I was going through a battle and he said that there's a, a pavilion. He will hide you in the secret of his pavilion yes. from the strife of men and tongues. Men's tongues. So there's times that God has a place where there's a secret pavilion. Or a place, it could be in a prayer room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could be, amen, at the church. Or it could be in your car. Mm -hmm. It could be in your bedroom when everybody is asleep and is quiet. It's a secret place. Yeah, God. Amen. amen. And he said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge mm -hmm. and my fortress, my God, and in him will, will I, I trust. So I want you to write these two things down. Mm -hmm. Abide in God. Abide in him. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word abide in me, you will ask what you will and it shall be done. Mm -hmm. So we abide in that secret place. Amen. Amen. And then we put our trust in God. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, put your trust in God. Put your trust, put your trust, in, trust God. in God. He says, he surely shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. The scriptures that the there's a scripture that David said, "My soul escaped, yes, like a bird, out of the snare of a fowler." Yes, the snare is broken, yeah. and we are escaped. Okay. For our help is in the name of the Lord. Yes, and so God will break every snare. A mm -hmm. snare is a plot or a plan mm -hmm. or a trap. Right. Anybody ever feel like you were being trapped, mm -hmm. put in a situation where you felt trapped and couldn't get out of the trap? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, but he says plainly, he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. Yeah. And from the noise and pestilence. Mm -hmm. Well, what's noise and pestilence? That means, you know, have you ever uh, felt the uh, certain pests, amen, that seem to keep coming, amen, away from you, and, mm -hmm. I mean around you, mm -hmm. amen, that noise and pestilence? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I want you to know this, that God, amen, mm -hmm. will deliver you. From the noisome pestilence. That's right. I was trying to make a little bit more room. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. So whatever the enemy is trying to do, mm -hmm. try to accomplish, God will deliver you yeah. from those, somebody say those pesky things. From those, those pesty, pesty things. things. Amen. Those, those things that get on your nerve. Amen. 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 Those things that get on your nerve. He will deliver you. He's got a plan. Mm -hmm. Amen. To get rid of those things. And you know what? But he will sometimes allow those things to work until he until he has performed 
his good word towards you. Yeah, can you move that over a little bit? Yeah. yeah. So just move I it think the cord's on it. And the cord is on it. Yeah, so just move it just a little bit over. Yes. And so God, when God is doing something in your life and for you, amen, there's things that try to get on your nerve. That's that noise and pestilence. The things that uh, upset you or bring you anxiety or you're thinking thoughts that you know that you shouldn't be thinking. Right. Because remember, if the battlefield is in the mind. Is that right? Amen. And so he'll try to trap those pests in your mind. Mm -hmm. Wrong thinking. Yeah. Feeling defeated. Yeah. But somebody say, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. Say it again, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. So we don't always understand everything, but he said in the word, in Proverbs, what, 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Write that down, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And lean, lean not, not to thy own understanding. Understand. He said that in all thy ways, do what? Acknowledge, Acknowledge him. him. So you trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm -hmm. That's not. That's talking about everything that's within you. Mm -hmm. Of the fullness of who God is in your life. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. And in all thy ways, do what? Acknowledge, Acknowledge him. him. But he'll do what? Direct that. Direct, 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 he'll direct you right out of that problem. He has a strategy to direct you right out of that problem. That yes, situation. Yes. That onslaught of the enemy. Because yes, yes. remember, the, who is the fowler? The enemy. The enemy. The enemy. Amen. The devil is the fowler. So he said, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler mm -hmm. and from the noisome pestilence. And that word noisome has to do with noise. Yes. You keep, you know, keep hearing that drama. Keep hearing those negative words. Keep hearing those problems. Mm -hmm. But God wants you to, amen, hear the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. He wants you to praise and magnify him. Mm -hmm. He wants you to shout unto God with what? A voice, a voice of, of what? Triumph. triumph. Say it with me. I shout unto God. I shout unto God. With a voice. With a voice. Of triumph. Triumph. Amen. So that means I've already agreed with God that this is the victory that overcometh the world, even my faith. So no matter what onslaught the enemy throws at me, Amen. God will give me the victory. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, I have the victory. I have I the have victory. victory. And then he said, he shall cover thee with his feathers. Mm -hmm. He shall cover thee with his feathers, mm -hmm. and under his wings shalt thou trust. Yes. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Mm -hmm. He'll cover you mm -hmm. with his feathers. And yes. Amen. And there's something about it. I mean, have you ever watched... Uh, a mother hen or eagle, how they hide their mm -hmm. their their little chickens under their little chicklets under their feathers, yeah. and they do that to protect them from uh, predators, yeah. from even other birds that would steal the, the egg out of the nest. Amen. Before yes. it's able Amen. to, to uh, move out of it or fly on its own. Mm -hmm. Well, God calls us eagles. We will yeah. rise up. Amen. He He symbolizes us. Amen. Yes. That victorious man or woman. Or child of God, mm -hmm. as a you shall rise up with wings as an eagle. Yes. You'll run and not get weary, and you'll walk and not, not faint. faint. And so he'll cover you mm -hmm. with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. And now write this down. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Mm -hmm. So how do I have victory over the onset of the enemy? Mm -hmm. The truth of God's word. Yes. His truth. His word is truth. Is yes. Right? Amen. Yeah, Amen. Amen. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. And so sometimes... The enemy will try in his season, mm -hmm. amen, to try to trap you. Mm -hmm. And he said, but thou shalt not be afraid. So God not, didn't give us a spirit of fear, no, but of power mm -hmm. and love and a sound mind. sound mind. So when it's dark at night, don't allow the darkness to cause fear to come. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Because darkness is the absence of light, but God yeah. is light. Amen. And amen. So you have the light of God in you. So it doesn't matter what darkness surrounds you. You got light on the inside. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't be afraid by the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noon day. day. Now look what it said. Nor for the pestilence. Mm -hmm. There's that word again. Mm -hmm. Pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor for the destruction that wastes at noon day. A thousand yes. shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand. Mm -hmm. But it shall not come nigh thee. All around you could be having, amen, there's things that's going off in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. We, as people of God, we don't really know how many times God all has right, right. Uh, delivered us, mm -hmm. amen, um, from danger seen and unseen. Mm -hmm. His amazing yeah. grace, mm -hmm. amen, making sure that as we travel down the street, mm -hmm. amen, where the enemy probably had something set up mm -hmm. for you to have a major car accident mm -hmm. and, and get your life taken. But God protected you. Yes. Angels yes. on the side. Somebody say angels. Angels. 
on assignment. On assignment. Make, making sure that you're protected. Amen. Mm -hmm. There have been so many times that I've got BSA, are we driving down the street, folks try to stop in front of us or uh, try to amen at, or, or come in front of us real fast or whatever, whatever their maneuvers. But God maneuvers around the strategy come on, of come the enemy. Come on, come on. Amen. I'll say it again. God will have, there's divine maneuvers. Yes, divine amen. maneuvers. Amen. Angels blocking and stopping yes, the plots and the plans and the maneuvers of the enemy. Amen. God has a strategy amen. to bring you through. So a thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Mm -hmm. Only with thine eyes, now look what it says, shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Mm -hmm. The wicked always has the day coming. Yes, For it says the yes, wicked always gnashes against the righteous. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you have an adversary who is the devil. Mm -hmm. Amen. And all his MO is he come to what? Kill, steal, yeah. and destroy. Right. But what did Jesus say? I've come I've that you come might, that have might have life. life. And that you have might have it more, more abundantly. Abundant. So then again, like, amen, I keep quoting quote that scripture. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even, even your faith. faith. And your faith is a shield. Yes. Amen. When we put on the full armor of God, and we'll get there in a minute. Mm -hmm. But then look what it says here. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge. Make sure you write that down. Mm -hmm. The Lord is your refuge. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my refuge, even the most high, mm -hmm. by habitation. Mm -hmm. Uh, to abide with somebody is to be in a dwelling place. Yes. So God wants us to understand and know that he, we have a habitation in the Lord. He is our refuge. He is our habitation. And then it said, there shall no evil befall thee. Yes. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Uh -huh. Well, what does it mean? There shall no evil befall thee. In other words, whatever evil the enemy is trying to set up, mm -hmm. because you have made the Lord, which is your Refuge. Mm -hmm. He, I made the Lord. Somebody say, I made the Lord my refuge. I made the I Lord, made the Lord my, my refuge. Do you know when you make the Lord your refuge, that means that that you have already agreed with God that He's going to protect you Amen. and bless you. Amen. He has canceled demonic assignments. All right. Demonic strategies. Yes. Demonic plots and plans and contracts of hell mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that they come to nothing. Yes. Amen. Amen. That they will not overwhelm you and neither will they overcome you. Amen. Because Amen. why? Because you make the Lord your refuge. Mm -hmm. And so Amen. then he said, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Yes. And so where, where you're living, your dwelling place. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I'm so glad that I found out a long time ago yes. that when I invite the Lord into my home, mm -hmm. or I invite, when we invoke the presence of the Lord in the ministry, yes. or the Bible college, whatever I'm doing, yes. when I invoke, when I'm at the radio station, mm -hmm. when I invoke, I can feel his presence. Yes. I know that he's near. Amen. He said he'll never leave you, nor, does, nor, nor forsake you. Forsake. Yes, he won't forsake you. Mm -hmm. That the angels of the Lord encamp. Well, we're going to get to that in a minute. Amen. 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 Come now that dwelling. For he shall give his angels. Charge. Charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Yeah. And so what does that mean? Giving his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Mm. Well, I, I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, there are times in your life that, amen, that your ways, amen, mm -hmm. may seem even mis they're mis misunderstood to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some people many times don't understand your ways. They'll say, I just don't understand that sister. She seems so different to me. Mm. But God said, I'll be with you in all your ways. So mm. if people think that you're strange, sometimes don't worry about it. God said, I'll be with you. Amen. And they, amen. amen. If, if, if you see distance to some people, sometimes that distance is only because God has set you apart. Mm -hmm. For I, I can't, I don't have a lot of friends. I, I would like to have a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. I do have amen. a few. But sometimes we wonder, Lord, why can't I just hang with the girls and amen and be on the phone talking to, and three or four of my girlfriends calling me back to back. I remember when I first got saved, mm -hmm. that's the way it was. Right, right, I had, right. you know, a lot of friends, a lot yes. of friends. Yes. Amen. But I noticed that as I got more consecrated. Come on now. And deeper in the things of God and yes. in the word of God, when yes. God set me apart. What do you think it means to be set apart? All right. Now, it doesn't right. mean that you can't have friends. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that there's a friend that's stick up closer than a brother, brother mm -hmm. which we know is Christ Jesus. Yes. So you never have to feel like you're in this world alone. Amen. Because God brings friends to encourage you, to help you, to strengthen you. Yeah. But it's the right kind of friends. Right kind. Not the kind of friends that will try to lead you mm -hmm. into sin or lead you into doing drugs or alcohol or, mm -hmm. or, or, or to make you feel like you're the eyeball out because mm -hmm. you worship Jesus Christ. Yes. 
Because he's the friend that's sticking closer than the brother. Amen. How can two walk together except they agree? Except they agree. So, amen. Association brings what? A simulation. You become who you work with, mm -hmm. who you who you party with, mm -hmm. who you who you befriend. Amen. I can't run with everybody. Because mm -mm. how can two walk together? Everybody ain't going in the same direction. Amen. Is that right? Amen. And so if you're saved and you're worshiping Jesus Christ and you love the Lord with all your heart and all your mind and, and you go into the church house, but, but they want to lead you to another kind of house. Uh, that ain't gonna work. Somebody say it ain't gonna work. It ain't, it ain't gonna, gonna work. work. Amen. It's not gonna work. Cause see, I, I, unless I, unless we're going to the same place together, Amen. Unless we have vision together, all right. Amen. Because when your friends don't have the same vision you have, mm -hmm. Amen. They will prevent your vision mm -hmm. from continuing. Mm -hmm. So it said, look what it said. So his angels, are they not all? The Bible gets said, are they not all ministering spirits sent for to minister unto us who are heirs of salvation? Mm -hmm. So I want you to write down angelic assistance. Angelic, angelic assistance. How the angels of God will assist you. Mm -hmm. Angelic assistance. Yes. So you might have, amen, some demonic activity that's coming after you or coming at you. But don't worry, you will also have angelic assistance angelic assistance amen and i thank god for angelic assistance because the angels the bible said in hebrews 1 14 are they not all ministering spirits mm -hmm. sent forth to minister unto us who are what heirs, heirs of, of salvation. salvation so the angels of god mm -hmm. have a assignment mm -hmm. to not only watch over you yes but he gives them charge over you. That means they have to answer to God concerning your life. Amen. Amen. They have an assignment to make sure you fulfill your ministry, mm -hmm. your purpose. They protect you. A lot of times you're not even aware that you've been protected during the day. But I, I decree and declare that the angels of God watch over you in all your ways. Whether you're going north, south, east, or west. Whether you have a bad day or a good day. Mm -hmm. Amen. They are on assignment. They shall bear thee up in thy hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Mm -hmm. And write that, make sure you write that down. They'll bear you up. They'll bear you up? They'll bear you up. Amen. They'll raise you up. Thou, and then look what it says. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thy trample underfoot. Mm -hmm. Amen. So the enemy is under your feet. Somebody Amen. said the devil is under my feet. The devil is under my feet. But because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. Uh -huh. Because he set his love upon me. Because we love Jesus with all of our heart, with all our mind, with all of our soul, with all our strength. Yes. He said, I will set him on high mm -hmm. because he what? He's known my name. Yes. Because you, yes. amen, because you have that, re that relationship with him. All right. That intimate relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then amen. he says, he shall call upon me. Yes, Lord. I'll answer him. Mm -hmm. I will be with him in trouble. Jesus. I will deliver him and honor him. I will say to him, he shall call upon me. So when you call upon the name of the Lord, know that the Lord will hear and he will help. Somebody say he will hear, he will and, hear he will and he will help. He said, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Yes, and with long life will I satisfy him yes, and show him my salvation. My salvation. Thank amen. Thank God will show, Hallelujah. amen, us his salvation. Mm -hmm. And that means he will save us and deliver us. Yes. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 54. Mm -hmm. amen. amen. Isaiah 54. And we give you praise, Lord. Give you praise, oh God. Amen. We give you praise. Jesus, yes, Isaiah 54. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and so the Lord, amen. And we, we're going to start. Uh, a lot of times we, 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 uh, we don't read this far up on Isaiah the 54. But I want to bring it all in today for a purpose. Yes. In the 13th verse he says, And all thy children mm -hmm. shall be taught of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And great shall be the peace of thy children. Mm -hmm. That means nothing missing, nothing broken. Soteria. Yes. Yes. That means God will surround your mm -hmm. children with his peace. Yes. And then it said, In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt not be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear and from terror. For it shall not come near thee. Almost sounds like Psalms 91, doesn't it? Yes. Amen. Righteousness is a protector. So write that down. Righteousness, Righteousness is a protection. Righteousness is a protection. Righteousness is a protection. Yes, Lord. Amen. And then it said, Behold, they shall surely gather together 
but not by me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So they might conspire to sabotage, mm -hmm. to come against your life, your ministry, your home, your finances, your health, your influence. Mm -hmm. Amen. But look what it said. For it shall not come nigh thee. Behold, they shall gather together, but not by me. Uh -huh. God's not in the midst of that confusion. Yes. Because God's not the author of it. Is that right? Amen. Amen. God's not the author of confusion. So he said, they shall gather together against thee, but, and but, for thy, but they shall fall for thy sake. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So if they dig a pit, guess what? They will fall into their own pit that they dug. Amen. So he said, Behold, I've created the smith and blow up the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. Mm -hmm. I've created the waster to destroy it, but no weapon. No weapon. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Mm -hmm. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Mm -hmm. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness. Is of me, said the Lord. Yes. So somebody make sure you write that down. No weapon, no weapon that is formed against me that is formed against shall me. prosper. Shall prosper. And, and so even the tongues, those that have wagging tongues. Mm -hmm. So there one time we prayed that the Lord stopped the lion's mouth. Amen. amen. The tongue of a lion. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because some words, amen. Remember, uh, the power of death and life is in the tongue. Yes. So many times when people speak evil, they're trying to release something in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. To try to tear you down, weigh you down, mm -hmm. keep you from going forward. Yeah, well, but right. the thing that we have to understand, mm -hmm. again, that he said, mm -hmm. they shall rise in every tongue. Every yes, tongue that shall yes, rise against thee. Yes. In judgment, thou shalt condemn. Shall for this condemn. is the inheritance or the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, is of me said the Lord. the Lord. So God will divinely protect you from the stranger's tongue mm -hmm. or the tongues of the enemy. The plots and the plans of the devil. Yes, okay, let's go to uh, Isaiah 59. <laughs> Make sure you write these scriptures down and you will not forget them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So Isaiah, the which we call the eagle eyed prophet, mm -hmm. of course he prophesied about Christ more than mm -hmm. any of the prophets. Amen. Uh, in Isaiah 7, 14, he said, he, mm -hmm. he, amen, he prophesied about the virgin shall conceive and mm -hmm. amen, Brave and have a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Amen. Amen. And so Isaiah had a prophetic ministry. But at the same time, Isaiah knew that the enemy would fight God's people. Amen. And so God gave him this word. So, they, so shall they fear the name of the Lord. Isaiah 9, 50, 59 and 19. From the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. And so when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Look what it says here. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. Amen. And his glory from the rising of the sun. And when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. So what does it say? The spirit of the Lord has the ability to, to fight for you. To lift up a standard when the enemy comes in. Amen. So God always wants us to understand that, amen, that he will fight against the works of the enemy. He'll lift up a standard, amen, a standard of what? Righteousness, amen. So when he comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. But he says again, and the redeemer shall come to Zion and to them that turn from transgression to Jacob, saith the Lord. But as for me, this is my covenant with them. Somebody say covenant. covenant. Now write this down. Covenant. Covenant. Okay. Make sure that you're in covenant with God. My spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth. So I speak the word of the Lord and God watches over the word to perform it. It's forever settled in heaven. Look what it said. That and put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth nor out of the mouth of thy seed nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. In other words, God will put a sure word of prophecy, not just in your mouth, but in the mouth of your children and your children's children, so that as you, amen, like Psalm 78, teach the word to your children from generation to generation to generation to generation, amen, that they will allow the word of God to not only impact their life, but they'll live by the word of God. Amen? 
Amen. Well, let's go into the New Covenant now, the New Testament. We laid down that foundation in the Old Covenant. But let's go to the New Testament. We're going to start at 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. 1 Corinthians, 10th chapter. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians, 10th chapter. Hallelujah. First, yes. And we're going to look at a scripture that many times when the enemy is trying to fight against you, you need to be aware. Aware that you can, amen, outlast him. Amen? You can outlast him. So write down 1 Corinthians 10. And we're going to start with the 12th verse. It said, Wherefore let him that think if he standeth take heed lest he fall. So we have to have the mindset of victory. Amen? Amen. Amen. We, have to, we need to understand that God will always perfect those things concerning us. And so we have to have a victorious mindset. Somebody say, I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim. I have the victory. I have the victory. Amen. So I don't have a victim mentality. But that's what the enemy wants you to have. He wants you to always consider yourself victimized. Amen. Uh, but, don't, but don't even allow those thoughts to germinate in your mind. You're more than a conqueror through him that loves you. You're an overcomer. Amen? Amen. And then he says, there have no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able. Now look what it says here. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you might be able to bear it. So there's no temptation. Now remember temptations, well, you'll never be tempted, be tempted above what you're able, but the enemy will always come with a temptation that appeals to your flesh. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. So, amen, there's some things that just don't tempt me. Amen? There's some people that just don't tempt me. There's some activities or entertainment uh, that don't tempt me. I don't have to be tempted to go to a nightclub anymore. When God brought me out of the world, he brought me out of the nightclubs. I'm not tempted to hang with the jazz musicians anymore, even though I, that was my lifestyle for 10, 12 years. When God brought me out of that lifestyle. So when I, when I hear about them or see, I, I don't allow that to be a temptation. That, but when there is real temptation, somebody say real temptation. Real temptation. With something that your flesh does want. Look what I'm talking about. Yes, it's a temptation because it wouldn't be no temptation if you didn't want it. Is that right? Amen. So when it's something that you truly, truly want mm -hmm. that becomes a temptation, well, God, what does God do? They have no temptation taking you but that which is common. That means something that you deal with, something that you go through. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able. So God will put, he'll put a stop. He'll surround it with divine protection, whether it's angelic protection, whether it's a word that keeps popping up in your spirit, whether somebody calls you right when the temptation is at hand and say, girl, what you doing? Uh, brother, what's happening? Amen. Would get your mind off that temptation. Because remember, the enemy always tries to come in an hour when you think nothing. He's always going to try to stop you when you're very vulnerable. But the strength of God, God's word will strengthen you to endure hardness as a good soldier. Amen? Amen. And so he says, uh, there's no temptation taking you but that which is common. But write this down, but God is faithful. Somebody write it down, write it down. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. So God will, amen, somehow or another, God will keep you from falling. He's able to present your faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you might be able to, to bear it? Somebody say, I can bear it. I can bear it. Because God made a way for me to escape. Because God made a way for me to escape. Okay, so let's go to 2 Corinthians. Amen. 2 Corinthians. And we're going to look at the 10th chapter there. Amen. 2 Corinthians 10th chapter. We're just about done. Amen. 2 Corinthians 10. And so there's a weaponry that God has that we may need to stay strong enough to 
Amen. To get victory over the onslaughts of the enemy. Mm -hmm. God has weaponry in mind. So look what he says, starting at the third. Now, you know what? I feel led to go up a little bit further. Because the Apostle Paul, uh, which was one of the premier preachers in the gospel of Jesus Christ, as a matter of fact, he called his gospel, his, you know, he named his gospel not so much after himself, but he talked about the gospel that God gave him revelation and insight on. Mm -hmm. yes. So Paul says in uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 1, Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and the gentleness of Christ, mm -hmm. who in presence am based among you, but be an absent and bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I'm present with the confidence wherewith, uh, wherewith I think to be bold against some. Mm -hmm. Amen. Which think of us, us as if we walked according to the flesh. Mm -hmm. Apostle Paul was saying, don't get it twisted. Right. Don't think that I just operate in my flesh. Don't think that I just operate in my intellect. Don't think that I just operate as, as a, nat a normal or carnal man, a natural man. Mm -hmm. Because Apostle Paul not only was the apostle of Jesus Christ, but he operated in revelation, knowledge, and insight. And that there was an anointing on his life. Mm -hmm. And that anointing yeah. on his life was able to destroy yokes and remove burdens. The anointing that was on Apostle Paul's life was able to tear down strongholds, yeah. amen, of the adversary and of the enemy. The anointing on his life would sometimes not only pull down the strongholds that were coming against, because remember, Paul was in defense of what? The gospel. the gospel. Somebody say he was in defense, was in defense. of the gospel. Of and anytime gospel. you're in defense of the gospel, anytime you have made up your mind, I'm going to serve the Lord with all of my heart, with all of my mind, with all my, you are a tar Do you know the word of God is a sword? And a sword, amen, is a defensive weapon, amen. So, and a shield, of course, is an offensive weapon. Mm -hmm. But anytime I put or pull out my sword, mm -hmm. and the sword, of course, what is the sword? The sword is the word of God. God. Amen? Amen? The sword is the word of God. And so anytime I pull out that sword, that means I'm about to do battle mm -hmm. against the adversary and against the enemy. Amen? Amen. So look at what he says here. He, uh, as he says, behold, I beseech you that I might be bold when I'm present. I might not be bold, rather, with the confidence where with something to be bold against them, which mm -hmm. think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. He said, in other words, they were counting his boldness mm -hmm. as not that big deal. Mm -hmm. But Paul was bolder than they realized. Right. Because Paul wasn't, de he wasn't depending on help from the flesh. Mm -hmm. So he says here, for though we walk in the flesh, mm -hmm. we do not war after the flesh. Yes. So what was Apostle Paul saying? He said, I know somebody's got issues with me. And amen, they looked at Paul and they talked about how he, he seemed small and beggarly in his image or whatever, his, his persona. But Paul, whether no matter what his situation or no matter what his problem was, 